that applause, folks. What other steamship line gives you this kind of entertainment on the high seas? And where is it coming from? You said it. The transatlantic merry-go-round program of the SS Progress. What a boat. A snappy deck, three hot funnels, and a hundred syncopated portholes. And all nice people. Try a trip on this boat for what ails you. This is Chad Denby signing off until tomorrow night. Good night, folks. Good night, Mr. Lothar. Good night, Captain. Saunders might jump this boat. Well, I'm not interested. When I left headquarters this morning, I cut the words police and criminals right out of my vocabulary. I don't blame you. You've earned a rest. Name and reservation said Lothar. Lee Lothar, 4C. 4C, yes. Hey, for mister, read all about it here. Come in. Oh, Stuart, come in. Put up a chair and have a drink. Name and reservation, sir. My name's Campbell. Come on, get out of here. Right this way, sir. Name and reservation, Mrs. Ross on C-43. Yes, sir. Just a minute, Porter. My husband's not sailing. Oh, it's all happened so suddenly, I can't believe I'm really going. <laughs> Too bad you can't come along too, darling. As long as we can indulge your whims, somebody in the family have to work. That's the important thing. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, Porter, get my baggage out of the check room and put it aboard the ship. What is your reservation, sir? Cabin 108, second class. I'll see you aboard. Yes, sir. Well, here we are, raring to go. But no kidding, Patsy. There's a great bunch of people on this boat. Nothing but class. All members of the who's who. Hey, hey, hey wait a minute. Well, is this one of the who's who? He's probably one of the here's how. Oh, wait a minute, old boy. Take it easy. You know, the ocean is pretty rough today. I'll see it. How fast is this boat going? Oh, I should say about uh, 30. Pretty good, 30 miles an hour. No, not. Oh. <laughs> hey, he's funny. Maybe you can use him in the show, Mr. Denby. Denby? Are you Chad Denby? Yes, sir, that's me. Not the real Chad Denby? In person. So what? Where's your dry human out, Chad? In the trunk. Uh-oh. 
Captain, I think I'd better pour you on the boat. Steady, old boy. I've got you. Thanks very, very much. I appreciate that. Let's go. Take these and put them in C-51. And the other trunk has my name on it. Just like this. Okay. Now, it's very important. It has our costumes in it. I'll take care of it, Miss. Hi, boy. Hello, Mr. Dudley. Hey, Sally. How's the big star of my show? Swell. Say, I'll have your name up in lighthouses all the way from here to England. Well, that's something. Even if only the fish see it. Well, their money's as good as anybody's. <laughs> you happy? I will be as soon as that boat sails. Look, sis. I thought I had our sailing covered up, and here it is. Do you think Lothar might have seen it? So you two kids better get on board, ship. I'll take care of the baggage. Hey, Porter. Porter, yes, take sir. care of these trunks, will you? Oh, that's it. Sally! Sally! We just had a variety of where you were sailing, so I brought some of the boys and girls down to give you a chair. Oh, no. These steamship companies are going into show business in a big way. I should say so. This oh, no. transatlantic showboat idea is a novelty. Yeah, they want to take all the water relax out in the middle of the ocean and drop them overboard. Oh. <laughs> that's a dirty trick to play on the poor fish. <laughs> I don't like it. Thank you. This is the first time I've been away from Montana in quite a while. Oh. I'm homesick already. Well, the lumber business has been pretty good lately. And I guess I owe myself this trip. Well, I'll see you on board. Yes, see you on board. All right. Now listen, Jimmy. Not here. Follow me. Don't you know enough not to talk to me with people around? You're putting a swell on, huh? I thought you were a smart guy. If I was a smart guy, I wouldn't be working my way across on this boat. We didn't have enough dough for two tickets, did we? Well, we could have got two third class. Oh, there's no bankroll there, my boy. You're lucky I could get you signed on at all. The heat's on, shorty. Those Atlantic breezes are going to be mighty welcome. Well, I ain't squawking, but I'm not used to working. And that's a bad habit to get into. It'll never hurt you. Got any money? A dollar seventy, and I'm going to keep it. Oh, no, you're not. Give me that dollar seventy. Well, I'll give you half of it. Here's 70 cents. Give me that other dollar. I'm broke. I'll need it for tips. Oh, no, no. You're not going to give my hard-earned money away. Hey, listen to me, Shorty. Next, next. Here comes my boss. Oh, and Stewart. Don't forget that dollar change you owe me. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're a wise guy, aren't you? Come on, now. Give me back that dough, now, will Shorty. you? Get... Look. C-49. Yes, sir. McKinney. The smartest dick in Manhattan. Hey, you don't think that's The he's... only time they ever picked me up, McKinney walked through the room while they were grilling. Well, let's see how good his memory is. Oh, Jimmy, please don't do that. Gentlemen, have you seen a colored man in a chauffeur's uniform carrying a large basket of fruit? No, I haven't. Thanks. <laughs> I've been waiting for an excuse to do this for a long time. Goodbye. 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 Goodb
Yes, sir. Uh, give this man a radio blank. Here you are, sir. Where is your wife? New York. What, 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 what should I say? Oh, just tell her you're going to France. You'll be back in four weeks. That'll take care of everything. Good. We'll be back in New York in four weeks. Uh, how much is that? Uh, for you, that's a dollar a word. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Eight words, that's eight dollars. Mm -hmm. But that's too much to spend. I can save you some money. How? We'll be back in New York in four weeks. Where do you live? New York. Your wife knows that, don't you? Uh, of course. Then we cut out New York. We'll be back in four weeks. You see, I've saved you a dollar already. Splendid. Now, y you take the dollar, will you? I'd rather you had it than the company. Send that. Now, just a minute. I think we can cut out a couple of more words. We'll be back in four weeks. We don't need will be. Back in four weeks. That, that, that's two more dollars I owe you. S send it. Now, wait. I think we can cut something else out. Mm -hmm. Back in four weeks. Instead of saying in four weeks, we say next month. That saves another word. Send it. Now, look. We don't need back. Where is back? New York. Your wife knows that, don't she? Certainly. Then we cut it out. That leaves us next month. Send that. Now, just a minute. What is next month? Uh, June. All right. Instead of saying next month, we save a word and we say June. Uh, send it. Now, send that. June. Uh, that's my wife's name. Well, that's wonderful. We've got the address and a message all in one word. Send it. Wait, wait now, wait now. Your wife knows her name, don't she? Uh, of course. Well, then we don't have to send it at all. You see, I've saved you eight dollars. Well, you have the money. I'd rather you had it than the company. Thank you. What stateroom is Miss Marsh in, please? C-51, sir. Where would that be? Around to the right. right. Looking for me? Anya. Don't you hate people that surprise you? I do. Well, we can't stand here. No, we'd better have a drink. I wasn't running out on you. As soon as I got over there and made my plans, I'd have sent for you. Yeah. Then why the sudden exit without letting me know? Do you really want to know the truth? It would be a nice change from you. I had an idea your friend husband was getting suspicious. Oh, you're such a charming liar. You know that Herbert's too dull to be suspicious about anything. Why, even when I went to Europe with only... How'd you get away with that? Well, when I heard that you were going, I had an attack of nerves, a few tears, and Herbert was on his way downtown to get my passport. Ah, oh, kid. I'm here now with you, and that's really all that matters to me. Yeah, sure. You couldn't try to look a little less glum, could you? Don't be silly. I'm tickled to death to see you. That's fine. Because you're going to see a lot of me for the rest of your life. Well, if you must know the truth, I'm going to Carlsbad for my health. And gentlemen, I'm going home because my wife is going to have a baby. Good. <laughs> and how about you? Why are you on the boat? I'm going to kill a man. <laughs> Was he kidding? Well, Shorty, there's a girl on this boat. There's a thousand of them. A thousand? She's one in a million right off the top of the rose bush. Hey, this is a business trip. She was carrying a bag with S.M. on it. I wonder why her name isn't on the passenger list. Well, maybe she's with the show, one of the troopers. Why didn't I think of that? Hey, what are you going to do with those? Well, i got to get even some way, don't I? You know my motto, don't you? Yeah, business first if it doesn't interfere with pleasure. Right, but that doesn't need to apply to you. Now you keep your eyes open for anyone wearing a lot of cracked ice. And give me the office. Now you're talking. Oh, boy. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever hook a dress? I never stole anything. Where is C-38? Just around to the right, miss. Thank you. Mitzi. Come on, what are you doing? Oh, now you've spoiled it. It took me an hour and a half to get it that way. Get inside with the rest of the troops. Oh, no, no, I've got to take my nap. 
You took a nap this morning. Yes, but this one's for tomorrow. All right, all right, all right. Come on, cut it. I remember what I told you, all of you. You're not on this trip just for the ride. I want a good peppy show tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you all set? Why, certainly. How are the pipes, Frank? Now, don't worry about the pipes, because they were never better. That's fine. And remember in that song of yours, hold that high note at the finish. Yeah, but the song finishes on a low note. Well, then hold that. Hold something. I don't know. I'm having my own trouble. I'll hold now, it. Now, come on. I'm a very busy I'll man. I've got to get my hair fixed anyway. Oh, sure. Get your hair fixed. It's very, very important. Scram. Come on. Up. Out. What is it with you? What are you sitting here for? It keeps me from getting tired. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. You learn those jokes I gave you for tonight? Learn them? I fell out of my cradle laughing at them. Maybe that's what's the matter with you. Come on. Oh, Chan, I don't know from this ocean show business. I'd rather travel by rail. You will when the sea gets a little rougher. I don't get it. I didn't expect you to. Go, 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 scram. Are you still here? What's the matter with you, Ned? Why don't you cheer up? You're beginning to look like your passport picture. Chad, loafers on the boat. Oh, so that's it. Now I get it. The Sally know he's on board? No, but... But I'm worried. Come in. May I see you alone? Sure. Ned was telling me a few riddles I may use on my broadcast. Riddles? He doesn't even know why a chicken crosses the street. Don't tell him. <laughs> Sorry you must go, brother dear. Everything okay, Sally? Just what the doctor ordered. Still got that dumb-looking picture of me, I see. Why not? The frame cost me five bucks. I might as well use it. How in the world did you ever give me a job? Say, I wasn't so smart in those days, either. Did you come here to work or to talk about how dumb we were? I came here to tell you what a swell guy I think you ought to do this. Do what? Oh, you know. Helping us to get away at a few hours' notice and never even asking why. News travels fast on Broadway. You had to get away from a rat, I knew that. It wasn't only that. It was Ned. Oh, the whole thing was my fault from the very beginning. Your fault? Of course. Ned got to hanging around Lee Lothar's gambling place, and the first thing I knew, he was working for him. I had to get him away. And incidentally, myself. So, here I am. Oh, don't let it get you down. Stay on the other side of the pond for a couple of weeks. You'll forget the whole thing. Chad Denby broadcasting. The nicest man I ever knew. Yeah, but not nice enough to marry you. Women are such fools. Why is it so many of us pass up right guys? If I figure it out, I'll let you know. See, I've got work to do. Run along. How are you, Mr. Lothar? Not intruding, I hope. Not at all. Mrs. Rawson, Mr. Summers. It's a rare pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Where I come from, out in Montana, we've got a lot of pretty women. But I guess if you walk down Main Street, they turn out the fire brigade. Montana? <laughs> yes, I'm a lumberman. Spent all my life out there piling up a bank balance. And now, gosh darn it, Honest Jack. That's what they call me. Honest Jack is going to see the world. Quit popping off, will you? Huh? You're wasting your time. She's a friend of mine. Come on, man, works the boats. We ought to prove a pretty fair combination and do some business. He's not a bad dealer himself. There's a lot of trout in this stream waiting for a fly. I've already been working on a young fellow from Chicago, related to one of the big packing families. Likes a little game of bridge and uh, poker. That's him. That's the sucker. Looks kind of lonely. Bring him over here. We'd have some cocktails and a few rubbers of bridge. Yeah, I can think of nothing nice. Why should we play? In your stateroom? Oh, by all means. I'm just beginning to enjoy this trip. So am I. If you'll excuse me, I have some important unfinished business to attend to. I'll see you all later. We'll be expecting you. Thanks very much. C-43. Oh, thanks. Hey. Where you been hiding? Oh, hello. Oh, I got you flowers. It was sweet of you. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. <laughs> Tell me, do you recognize me without the lipstick? So you washed it off? Uh-huh. 
But I could stand another coat. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. The dancing in the palm room, the soft music. Sorry, but I have an appointment to play shuffleboard. Oh, have we? Well, I'd just as soon play shuffleboard. I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, where have you been? Just about to give this to Trimmy. Kimmy is the name. Miss Marsh. How do you do? And this is Mr. Miss Brett. Uh, Mr. Brett. I've met Mr. Brett before. Oh, yes, on the pier. Oh, before that. Your face is very familiar. Yours, too. Are you McKinney, the dentist, on Calumet Avenue in Chicago? No, not quite. <laughs> Their faces are familiar, but not to each other. <laughs> well, now that that's all settled, how about making the game of force? Yes. Okay. All right. Miss Marsh and I will play you two gentlemen. Hey, okay, now, wait a minute. I'll take Sally and give you the best of it. i tell you what we'll do. We'll toss for it. Head, she plays with me. Right, head, you win. It's head, you win. Take it easy, young well, fella. Excuse me. What hit me? I'm awfully sorry. I, I really didn't mean to. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Don't mention it. Always a master ceremony. Why, it might have knocked his head off. What's the difference? He has more heads than he needs. I don't get the humor of that remark. Well, he does. Here you are, Brett. Thanks. Come on, Sally, we play down this end. You know, you're not a bad-looking girl. In fact, I think you're lovely. Keep your eye on the ball, mister. Oh, yeah. Oh. Married? Nothing to speak of. What is this, a third degree? No, but I want you to get used to hearing my voice. You're going to hear a lot of it. What a horrible death. Do you know what you remind me of? No. Tell me. Of a little boy that's just escaped from his nurse and... and... you want to adopt him. Well, 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 good for you. Hey, when you get through with that conference, shoot the last disc. Too bad we're not making a trip around the world so we can finish this game. Watch this one. Hey, you. Oh, no. You trim this. The drinks are on me. You must have left that wallet in the cabin. That's all right. I'll attend to this. Oh, wait a minute. Let's match for it. <laughs> Never mind. I'll pay for it now. It'll save time. Well, thanks for the game and the drink. Sure. If you'll excuse me now. Don't forget, that's a date. I'll be waiting for you in the lounge. I'll be there. Goodbye. Those two kids seem to be getting along fine. It's a sea air, I guess. It gets everybody. He's a likable chap. Got an honest face. Yes, it's all right if you like honest faces. Let's have another drink. Hey, waiter. No, thanks. I wouldn't impose on you. It's funny, I could have sworn I had that wallet. Where'd you get the dough? Inspector McKinney. Are you screwy? <laughs> I fell in his arms. I couldn't resist it. Boy, you know where your sense of humor's gonna get you one of these days. Here, drop it someplace where they'll find it and return it. You know, he's not a bad guy. I'll slip him back his 50 before we arrive. You take some awful chances. Well, I needed the dough. Play with those suckers with Here, get it changed. Get a lot of ones and a couple of fives. It'll be a good flash. Pressure, will you cash an American Express check for $50, please? Yes, sir. Can I have four fives and thirty ones, please? <laughs> you are, sir. Thank you. Enjoying the voyage, sir? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Can you read them, Jack? There is sins to read. Queen of clubs, ace of diamonds, ten of hearts. Say, our country boy's about due. Better unlock the door. Now, don't take too many chances. Don't worry, they won't squawk. They're professionals. Well, if that's the case, you're sure to win the first couple of hands. But what happens after that? That's where you come in. Now, listen, Shorty. You follow me down there, and when I go in the door... Now, don't forget, you can't play cards because you have a headache. When the three of us get started, you can scram, see? All right. We'll give him the come on, let him win the first few hands. Then when I give you the office, get it? Start taking him. Now, that's what we call double A grade lumber, ma'am. You won't have to knock that thousand feet. Waiting. Not at all. Oh, boy. Yes, sir? Take this check to the purser and have him give you $2,500. Bring the cash here. Yes, Mr. Brett, right away. 
Hello. Good afternoon. Ah, glad to see you again. Do you mind if I don't play? I, I really have a beastly headache. Oh, but darling, if you don't play, we won't have a fourth. I'm sorry, but you three men can play poker or something. See you tomorrow? I hope so. That's a date. Excuse me? Well, it'll have to be poker then. But I'm so unlucky at that game. If you gentlemen play for very high stakes, perhaps you'd better count me out. You see, I never play for anything higher than, say, um, $200 limit. Oh, that'll be satisfactory. Sit down. I bet a couple of hundred. I wonder what's keeping that boy. Don't worry about that. We'll settle after the hand. Where I come from out in Montana, a man's word is all that's necessary. I call three jacks. That's all that's necessary. Your money, Mr. Pratt. I'm glad I didn't win the first pot. Well, I'm going to pot that big, the boat would sink. Out my way in Montana, we're very superstitious. We always say a good beginning makes a bad ending. I hope that won't apply to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Here's your twenty-five hundred dollars, Mr. Brett. Oh, thanks. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. I owe you a dollar seven to keep the change. Thank you. Out my way in Montana, we always call a bluff. Well, I bettered mine, so I'll see you. Aces. Full. And me in there with two little pair. I thought my straight was okay. It's your deal, Mr. Brett. Come in. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Brett, but I have a very important message for you. Yes, what is it? Well, your mother's feeling seasick and wants to see you right away. Is she? Yes, sir. What a shame. Pardon me. Well, you'll be back. That depends on how mother's feeling. You'll excuse me, gentlemen? How much did you lose? Oh, about twelve hundred. Gee, I went for four. How much did you win? About sixteen hundred. Partners, ain't we? Sure. I'll show you what kind of fellow I am. Here's your half of the winnings now. Thanks, pal. Not at all. See that Miss Sally Marsh gets that bouquet of flowers with this card. Yes, sir. Hey, Arthur, if there's any change, keep it. Thank you. I'll attend to it right away, sir. Aren't they lovely? Sure. Oh, I'm so happy. Isn't it good to be away from it all? Seems almost too good to be true. I was just thinking about that. Oh, cheer up. There's nothing more to worry about, is there? Of course not. Well, then what are you acting so sour about? Hello? This is the ship's photographer speaking. I wonder if I can get a couple of pictures of you for the radio news. Why, certainly. Thanks very much. Cabin 4C. Right away? Thanks. She's coming. I'm getting important. They want my picture. Here now, here now. Snap out of it. I say, don't you hate a pest? I certainly do. So do I. There are times when a fellow likes to be alone. Yes. Yes, I'd like to be alone right now. So would I. Let's sit down and talk it over. Oh, Stuart. Stuart, Stuart. Yes, sir. Try and locate Miss Sally Marsh, please. Sally Marsh. Marsh. Yes, Sally Marsh. Come in. Aren't you going to say something? I've gone to a lot of trouble to give you this little surprise. Have a drink. No, thanks. Oh, Sally, let's not behave like children. Let's face the situation. All right. What is there to face? 
Why did you run away as though you were afraid of me? I didn't want to see you anymore. That's my privilege. It wasn't smart. Even if you had gotten away without me, I'd have found you, no matter where you were. Why don't you leave me alone? I can't get along without you, Sally. There never will be any other girl, you know that. It's no use, Lee. What have I done? You owe me some sort of explanation, after all we've meant to each other. Or perhaps you've forgotten all that. I wish I could. Oh, get wise to yourself, Sally. You're no sob story. And you get wise to yourself. I'm through with you, Lee. Everyone's entitled to one mistake. Well, you're mine. We're quits and we're going to stay quits. That's the girl. That's more like the old Sally, a little bit of fire. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, this is Miss Marsh. Yes, I've met Miss Marsh. Well, should we go into tea? I'll join you later. Yes, and do bring Miss Marsh. When she said a chance to tidy up a bit. No, thanks. If you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. She's one of the girls in an act on board ship. I met her by accident, that's all. Did you muss up her hair by accident, too? She's an old friend of mine, and I like her. So what are you going to do about it? Just make it as difficult as I possibly can for you to see her. I didn't ask you to come on this trip with me, you know. Take it easy, Lee. No other woman will ever get you. At least I'm honest when I tell you that there must be something very low down in me. Because I like you. Leave me alone, will you? No. I like touching you, Poison Ivy. You've just been kissing that girl when I came in, hadn't you? Baloney. No, darling. Lip rouge all over your mouth. Let me wipe it off. I adore you, you gorilla. I'm nuts about you too, beautiful. I couldn't live without you. Oh, Denby, have you seen Sally around? Uh, no, I'm looking for Miss Marsh myself. Well, she was to meet me here. Why don't you wait? She ought to be along any minute. I would, but I have a rehearsal right now. Oh, uh, before I go, I'd like to ask a little favor of you. You see, Sally is a very important part of my show. And uh, someday, I don't mean right now, but sometime when you have a chance, I wish you'd let her come to just one rehearsal. I'll appreciate it. <laughs> Seen Sally? She's gone to the ship's photographer. Well, come on, there's a rehearsal. Sally! Oh, I had an appointment with you. I forgot. You're forgiven on one condition, that you don't make any engagements with anyone else for the rest of the voyage. That's a large order. Just a merry little ray of sunshine today, aren't you? What's wrong? Oh. Don't you want to tell me? It wouldn't help matters much. Anything I can do? I'll jump overboard if it'll do any good. <laughs> That's decent of you. Decent? Oh, I think any guy could be decent. If you were interested. You think so? Come on. We'll have those long-awaited cocktails. They'll cheer you up. Oh, do you mind very much if I don't? We can have cocktails some other time. All right. Please don't be offended. I don't know what it's all about. But anything you do is all right with me. Rock and rhythm of the sea. Tonight. 
Just like a mother to it. Marry my bracelet? It's beautiful. I like the other one better. So do I. you excuse me? I'll be back in a few minutes. If you see Mr. Lothar, send him along, will you? Yes, I will. If I had a million dollars, I know just what I would do. I'd tie a string around the world and bring all of it. What's up, Jimmy? The ice is in storage. Stick with me. Keep a lookout, Shorty. Why? Yes, sir. Come here. Can you tie a bow tie? 
Oh, yes, sir. A little uh, nervous, aren't you, boy? No, sir, I'm tired. Tired, huh? Yes, I'm awfully tired. There you are, sir. Thanks. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute, just a minute, sir. Uh. Hello, young fellow. Where are you going? Oh, just going up the show. Well, wait a minute, I'll go along with you. Fine. Don't mind. Fine. Why, it's a perfect setup. You meet a lot of people through your act. Some of them have money. All you have to do is steer them to me. You'll get your cut. As usual, that's understood. I won't do it, I tell you. Done your dirty work long enough. Not quite long enough. It's not as easy for you to get out of my racket as you seem to think. If I want to quit, you can't stop me. I'm expecting to meet some of your wealthy acquaintances by, let's say, tomorrow morning. Okay? Is this seat taken? Yes, it is. I, are, you, are you sure it's taken? Certainly. That's funny. I could swear there's no one in the chair. Well, I suppose there's room for both of us. Do you mind moving over? Hey. Uh, this is Chad Denby talking, remember? Hmm? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a little surprise for you. Right here on this boat, I'm going to show you how my company of entertainers broadcast from a New York studio. Would you care for that? Stand by, folks. I want you all to listen in and feel that you're with us. Sit right in your bathtubs and imagine you're on an ocean trip. You get me? And now for our play, Grind Hotel. The opening scene takes place in the lobby of this famous hostelry. Hello, Grand Hotel. No, he isn't in now. Yes, sir. I'll tell him. Hello? Yes, sir. I'll tell him. Say, clerk, the man in 214 says he can't find the bed in his room. He's sitting on a bench waiting. What bench? Tell him that's the bed. Pardon me. Where's the dining room in this hotel? The dining room? It's two blocks down the street. It's called the Presto Lunch. Thank you. Hello? Yes, ma'am. I'll tell him. Oh, clerk, the lady in 517 says there's a mouse running around the room. Tell her for 50 cents more. She can have the three little pigs. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Oh, clerk, Madeline Zinskaya wants a corkscrew right away. I'll take it up myself. She's eating oysters up there, and it'll give me a chance to get the pearls. How can I disguise myself as the Baron? Wash your face. Oh, yeah? I have it. And now for Rosinskaya's room. The scene now changes to Madame Rosinskaya's suite. Ah, oh, Zuzu, I am so tired tonight. So sick of it all. Isn't she lovely? Yes. And very popular. Oh, dear. Aren't you going to dance tonight, man? No, 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 no. It would kill me. Bring me my sleepers. Oh, no, 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 no. That would kill me. Ah, oh, I am so tired. Why must I dance when it is love that I need? Who is there? Tis I, the Baron. Tis I, the Baron. What Baron? Your cousin from Milwaukee. Oh, come in, Baron. I want to be alone. Yes, yes, Rosinskaya. I am mad about you. Kiss me. Who is 
sail? It is I, Volga Botmanovich. Volga Botmanovich? Quick, Baron, get under the bed. Please, get under the bed, quick. I want to be alone. Don't forget, I'm under the bed. Main 9247. Come in, Botmanovich. I want to be alone. Ah, Rosinskaya, I came to tell you of my love. Yes, yes. Ever since I met you here in Grind Hotel, I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. I cannot... Who's that? Quick, hide under the bed. I want to be alone. Hey, wait a minute. Go down and come upright. Come in. Who is it? <laughs> it's me, Stringerline. I still have one minute to live, and I want to live it with you. Oh, you poor man. Come, Stringerline. Sit here by my side. She I wants can't... to be alone. Ah, Rosinskaya, at last my happiness is complete, just being here with you. Look, he's only got one minute to live. And still he won't live right. Quick, Stringerline, hide. Where? Under that bed. I want to be alone. All right, I wait for you. <laughs> Come on, Stringy. Flash, we are now all under the bed. Three down and two to go. What a game. Hooray! Who is there? It's me, the announcer. This program comes to you through the courtesy of Limp's Raspberry Toenail Polish. Don't be a wallflower. Use our toenail polish and dance every dance. Limp's Toenail Polish. Remember the color, folks? <laughs> Raspberry. That was Grind Hotel, folks. Pretty good hotel for an ocean. And now, in her own little way, Mitzi will sing a song about the Swiss Alps, entitled, Oh, Leo, It's Love. Play, Jimmy. Sing, Mitzi. Okay, Jack. When the sun goes down in the valley, she yodels to him. Oh, Leo, 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 Leo. Oh, da 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 It's so lonely here in the valley when lights are on it. Oh, Leo, 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 Leo. Please hurry down, quit climbing around while I'm in this mood. All I get from you is a bird's eye view. Plenty of altitude. When the moon comes up in the valley, what am I thinking of? Only, 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 oh, it's love. <laughs> and casts a shadow on the valley. Uh, she yodels to our distant, disinterested groom. Uh, oh, Leo, Leo, uh, oh, Leo. Uh, there's nothing artistic about it. it. It's so lonesome and balsam at the bottom of a valley in Switzerland, uh, where the glamour and illumination are not what you'd find in uh, Piccadilly or the Strand. Uh, oh, Leo, Leo, oh, Leo, Leo. There, there's no reason for it. Uh, and Leo, will you please retire from your stratospheric location? Uh, did we not make this trip for relaxation and recuperation? Uh, you're way up bar, and uh, she's way down yah. Uh, it's the Switzerland in me. Uh, when the moon comes up uh, in the valley, uh, just uh, what are our mental calculations? Oh, Leo, Leo, oh, Leo, oh, dear, uh, this is getting excellent. 
very dry wine, don't you think? I didn't think so. Shall we have a little game of cards, gentlemen? Well, thanks, but I never gambled in my life. You're lucky. Out my way in Montana, there's nothing else to do. How about you, Mr. Brett? I don't feel lucky tonight. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll say good night. Good night. Good night. Well, shall we have a drink at my cabin? Oh, why not drink here? A waiter. All right. We'll all have a drink. Maybe you'll be lucky later. A very valuable breakfast, Miss Dolan. Send for the purser. My bracelet has been stolen. My bracelet has been stolen. Are you sure? When? Where did you have it last? In my cabin. I didn't wear it this evening. When I went downstairs, I found the lock of my jewel case broken open. You sent for me, madam? Yes. A bracelet has been stolen from my cabin. A what? A bracelet has been stolen from my cabin. Don't get excited, darling. Take it easy. We'll find it, all right? I suggest we go down and look. Here, this is my job. Well, if it was stolen, they'll never get away with it aboard ship, that's certain. Some of the smartest robberies have taken place on board ships. It'll be interesting to see how you go about solving this, Inspector. Sorry, but I'm on a vacation. Well, if he lets you down, I'll try my hand at sleuthing. You know, I bet I could find that bracelet. I wouldn't be surprised. Notify the insurance company, will you please? Yes, sir. Rest assured, if it's on the boat, we'll locate it. Thank you. But I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. They'll find it. How about a nightcap, Inspector? No, oh, thanks. I think I'll take a walk around the deck and then turn in. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Inspector. How long has it been since you saw that bracelet? Me? What are you driving at? The braces ain't in my line. You know that. I don't suppose you know anything about that bracelet. My darling, that's one of the few things I know nothing about. I wonder. You know, Sally, I think we'll live in Europe after we're married. Well, I didn't know we were going to be married. You didn't? <laughs> I guess I forgot to tell you. Is this a proposal? No, we're much further along than that. You've got an engagement ring coming to you just as soon as I can have the stone set. The moonlight's gone to your head. It's not the moonlight. It's you. All kidding aside, Sally, how about it? But you don't know anything about me. If you did, you probably wouldn't be here. I know all I need to. You're the first girl I ever met that I wanted to build a fence around. I'm crazy about you, Sally. Will you take some advice? If you're looking for romance, count me out. If you know what's good for you. But... I know what I'm talking about. Now, let's forget it. Sally, don't be like that. But I must. You see, I like you. Very much. And I don't want to see you get hurt. It takes a lot to hurt me. It wouldn't make any difference anyhow, as long as I got you.
Oh, hello, Inspector. I thought you were going to turn in. Nervous. Couldn't sleep. You feel like a nightcap? It's getting rather chilly. I believe I'll go to bed. Good night, Mr. McKinney. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Brett. Good night. You know what I'd do if I were you? What? I'd go to the purser's office. What for? Well, maybe someone else besides myself saw you in the vicinity of Mrs. Rosson's cabin this evening. You know, even the stewards in that corridor insisted on being searched. Get me? Sure. I'll go. I'll go with you. Swell. Purser, when we search a man, we usually run our hands up and down the lining of the coat like that, run your fingers along all those seams, see? And turn him around and look under the collar. That used to be an old trick. And never forget to run your fingers down his shoes. <laughs> hey, Inspector. Quit your tickling. I'm sorry. Then we usually run our hands up and down the man's arms like that, see? And his legs. In case what we're looking for might be attached to a string. See what I mean, Percy? Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Very. Well, I guess that's all. Uh, good night, Percy. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. He certainly was good-natured about it, wasn't he? Smooth is the word. I mean, most gentlemen would be offended if you searched them like that. It all depends on what you're used to. What's the matter, sir? Nothing. I just remembered the name of a guy that owes me 50 bucks. Listen, this is the first chance I've had to get away to tell you. McKinney was snooping around in this cabin last night. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Don't worry, Shorty, it's still there. You better bring it in. Here, what are you going to do with it? You keep it. Me? Sure. McKinney will never suspect you. Hey, wait a minute. Be right here, Shorty. I'm off to the pool. But, Jimmy. Large package of cork tips, please. Good morning, Inspector. Hello, young fellow. Going for a swim in the pool? No, I thought I'd try and catch up on my reading. I'll take this one. See you later. Right. Here's your change, sir. Thanks. Did you find your bracelet? No, and I'm furious. No one seems to do anything about it. Hmm. Well, why worry? He wasn't sure. How about on a swim? No, he wouldn't want me to get my suit wet, would you? I thought you were never coming. Yes, I could see you were pining away. Oh, that's Mrs. Rossing. How well do you know her? Oh, I just met her on the boat. We were to play bridge together, but she wouldn't, so uh, we played poker instead. With whom? Mr. Summers and a man named Lothar. Oh, you infant. How much did you lose? Lose? I won a little. That was a come on. Don't play with him again, promise me. What do you know about them? Too much. Remember, I warned you about me. I used to be Lee Lothar's girl. And now, if you have an appointment elsewhere, I'll excuse you.
Don't lose me, Sally. I know Lily myself. I'm beginning to think you're a pretty swell guy. Blimey, what have you got there? Huh? Where? In your hand. What was it, a bracelet? No. I ain't got nothing. Let's have a look at it. I ain't got time. Hey, stop him! He's got the bracelet! Stop him! Hey, stop him! Whiskey and soda. Hey, stop him! He's got the bracelet! Tell you, I ain't got no bracelet. I saw him take the bracelet out of that shoe. You're crazy. I ain't got no bracelet. Then why did you run away? Because you ran after me. It's kind of serious between you and Jimmy Brett. It is. Very serious. Hey. Why, don't you like him? Yeah, he's all right. Well, say it as though you meant it. Sure, he's all right. Is that better? Well, it's louder. You Americans are different than our performers. You have what we call great tempo. Well, that's very flattering. Oh, how do you do? Oh, hello. May I present Mr. Lothar, the Count and Countess de Marino? How do you do? John, Mr. Lothar's a very good friend of mine. Just on the point of having a drink. Won't you join me? Delighted. I'll break it up for you. Hello, folks. Hello, hello John. John. Oh, we enjoyed your show very much last night. Thanks. Do you mind if I drag Ned away for a minute? I have some business to talk over. Not at all. Pardon me. What's up? I've got to get back to my friends. Uh, please, Chad. Let me talk with him alone. Sure. You know perfectly well what I'm talking about. I've seen you introduce wealthy people to local before. I know what happens to them. Oh, they can take care of themselves. More than you can do. Haven't you any self-respect? How can you let Lothar use you that way? I can't help it. There's something I've been ashamed to tell you. What is it? When I first started hanging around Lothar's place, I used to try my luck once in a while. I didn't want to look like a pike at all those big shots and... Well, I got hooked. Go on. I didn't have the money to pay my losses, so, so I wrote a check and I signed Lothar's name to it. Nay. He found out about it. That's why I had to start working for him. It took months to pay him back. But you did pay him back. Every cent. But it didn't do any good. He's still holding that check, and he could turn me in any time he wants to. Oh. I don't know how I'm ever going to get away from him. Well, keep your chin up. We'll find some way out of it. All right, take your places, folks. Ready, everybody. Now, the winner of this horse race will be presented with a handsome autographed ocean wave. Oh, I want a new horse. His front legs are full of rubber. Come on, get up. I think this horse is carrying too much of a load. Who won? You got the first down. There's one to go. Now, come on, get ready now. Now, look, just keep a little stiff. I never was stiffer in my life. You're telling me. I'll bet you $100 Patsy wins this race. I never play the races. I tell you what I will do. I'll bet I get that bracelet before we hit France. Not a hundred, just fifty. I'll take that bet, Inspector. You're on. All right, get on your mark, everybody. Now, when you hear the pistol shot... Oh, I forgot my gun. I'll use this handkerchief instead. Ready? One, two, go! <laughs> Clark and Dan Campbell win. 
by a splinter. <laughs> I told you she'd win. You know, the great trouble with some guys is they're too smart. Now, if I'd taken that bracelet, I'd try and find some way to slip it back because I'd know I never could get ashore with it. I think you're absolutely right, Inspector. Could I see you a minute? Sure. Excuse me? Certainly. How are you? Well, when are we going to finish our little poker game? Tell you the truth, gentlemen, I've sworn off playing poker. You wouldn't quit when you're ahead, would you? Why? <laughs> Isn't that a good time to quit? Well, no gentleman would do that. Ah, uh, I agree with you there. No gentleman would. But, uh, I would. In that case, you owe us exactly $1,600. Oh, no. So I played with your cards, which you took the precaution of marking, what? on your cabin at your suggestion. Now, if you've got a kick coming, make it to the person. I'm making it to you right now. If I don't get that money by tonight, you'll find this a very rough voyage. And that goes two ways. <laughs> make it three, boys. I'll play this hand pat. And I'll lay odds you got that bracelet. I'll lay you odds you get a pair of them. You're clumsy. Why a high school kid could take you, saps? <laughs> Honest Jack. <laughs> One look at that mug of yours and the whole world buttons up its pockets. A large whiskey and no soda. Quite a growth, sir. You seasick? Yeah. Leave the moustache on. Seventy-five cents. Keeps change. Come in. I've just notified the head steward that your evening clothes are missing, sir. Good. Well, if they turn up, let me know, will you? I'll be in the dining room watching the show. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't go in there like this. Well, what shall we do? Well, let's sit around and kill a little time till your clothes show up, huh? Of course. Sure. Awfully dull trip. People are very unsociable. Even your clothes walk out on you. What's that? This? This is Harlem Tennis. It's a great game. How, how do you play it? Well, all you do is just rock them and roll them, see? I'll explain it to you. Look, if a 7 or 11 comes out on the first roll, you win. But if a 2, 3 or 12 comes out in the first roll, you lose. But if you roll any other number on the first roll, you've got to make that number before making a 7 to win. Do you get it? No. That's all I want to know. Look, I'll tell you what to do. You just cover this, and you'll learn as we go along, huh? Come on, cover this. Come on, seven or eleven. Ha! Uh, do you remember what I told you? No. Then I win. Could I have a go, then? Oh, it would be a pleasure. Go ahead. Six and five. What's that? Uh, that's ten. Go ahead, keep shooting. Five and five. That's right. And if that isn't ten, neither are six and five. 
There's something about an ocean voyage that makes everyone happy. Not necessarily. Business trip? Hmm? Well, you might call it that. Come in. I got your message, Sally. What did you want to see me about? Uh, I want to talk to you about Ned. Oh, anything wrong? I found out about that check. That's too bad. He didn't want you to know about that. Listen, Lee. Ned's just a kid. He didn't know what he was doing. You did. You shouldn't have encouraged him to keep on gambling. He has his whole future before him. If he keeps on working for you, he hasn't got a chance. Why don't you give him a break? Let him have the check back. I had no idea it was as serious as that. Why, of course I'll give it back. Oh, that's fine of you. Tell you what, I'll give it to you myself and you can tear it up. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Forget it. On stage! I'll come to your cabin immediately after the performance and give it to you there. We'll have supper together, the two of us, and celebrate. Like old times. Oh. So that's it. On stage, Miss Mark. What's Lothar doing back here? Nothing. Forget it, please. If he's bothering you again, I'll break his neck. Places, places. Oh, hello, Chad. Mind if I wait around for Sally? I have a date with her. I'll give you one more chance to tell the truth, Lothar. What do you mean? Now, why don't you be a good little boy and leave her alone? Oh, I remember. I understand you played an important part in her education when she first came to New York. No, I was just trying to teach her to stay away from guys like you. Oh, <laughs> you're very funny. You kill me. Say, that's not a bad idea. It was sweet of you be passing by, and the smile in your eye made my lonely heart sigh. There was something new in your sweet hello. Was it love at first sight? Darling, all I know, it was so. Of you bringing lips to kiss. Was it spring? Did the moon help encourage all this? The dream men we're off to a beautiful start. It was sweet of you.
your mind, Sally? Yes. I want that check. Fine. I'll bring it to your cabin around midnight. All right. What are you trying to pull anyway? Wait a minute, take it easy, you'll last longer. Why don't you leave Sally alone, you dirty... Hey, what happened to you? You've got a gun, haven't you, Chad? Why? Will you let me have it? What for? Don't ask any questions, just give it to me. Oh, take it easy, kid. Come on, I want to talk to you. left for a stroll around the deck? I can't. Tonight, it's too late. Would well, you mind if I walk with you as far as your cabin? I'd rather you wouldn't. In that case, I'll go right along with you. Good night. You seem awfully anxious to get rid of me. Tonight. I'm sorry. See you tomorrow. Pat? That's a day. Good night. Good night. I know. He's dead. Inspector, for the first time in the history of this line, a passenger's been murdered. <laughs> Won't you please take charge? Uh, Inspector, where is he going? I don't know. Come on, Joe. Get up out of there. All right, now spill it. Bill what? I don't even know this guy. You ought to. He took the witness stand against you. Had you sent up for ten years on a grand larceny rap. It was a frame-up. You shut off your mouth about how you were going to get him, and now you have. Wrong again, copper. I might have had the idea, but somebody beat me to it. Why, who is this man? Just an old friend of mine. Take him below. I'll get back to him later. I'll have to ask the rest of you folks to leave, please. I'm sorry. That's all, boys. All right. Doctor, you take charge of the body. Captain? I want the following passengers brought to the purser's office. So nobody wants to talk, eh? Well, that's too bad. It means I've got to do a lot of talking myself. And some of it may be the kind that hurts. All right. You'll do to begin with. Where were you when the murder happened? In my cabin, playing cards. Who with? Nobody. I was playing solitaire. What's the matter? Couldn't you find me, suckers? How well did you know Lothar? I knew him... Very well. Don't let him scare you, kid. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. Your smart advice isn't going to help her, Jimmy. You're in this yourself up to your neck. Me? You're cracked. You had an argument with Lothar a couple of hours before he was killed, didn't you? What of it? What were you doing in that corridor just before the shots were fired? He wasn't in the corridor. He was backstage with me. We ran down together and we heard the shots. He was in the corridor and he was backstage with you at the same time. <laughs> what a coincidence. Now, this is going to hurt. Isn't it a fact that Lothar fell for another girl and threw you over for her? No. You tried to get him back and couldn't? That's not true either. Then why did you ask him to come to your cabin tonight? Suppose she did. What difference you would it make? You keep out of this, Jimmy. You begged him to come to your cabin. You found out he was through with you. You couldn't stand the idea of another woman getting him, so you shot him. That's a lie. She was trying to get away from him, but she couldn't. He wouldn't let her alone. What do you know about it? Plenty. Ned. I won't sit here and listen to him talk to you like that. Yeah, it's about time you opened up instead of sitting there and letting your sister take the rap. You're yellow clean through. Am I? Yeah, you knew about Lothar and her. 
But because he had something on you, didn't dare do anything. How do you know I didn't? I don't know. But I'm beginning to find out. Is that your gun? No. I found it in your cabin. Let me see that gun. Well, that's mine. What's he doing with it? Chad had nothing to do with this. I took it out of his cabin. That doesn't make him a murderer. Those are blank cartridges. Yeah. Well, they look pretty real to me. They are. I got them out of Chad's cabin. Oh, you meant business, huh? Yeah. I thought so. Ned! Ned! You didn't do it. You couldn't have. Why couldn't he? He didn't do it. He didn't do it, I tell you. I did it. I did the whole thing. Just the way you said. Sally. Don't listen to her. She's trying to shield me. Why should she kill him? What reason did she have? You were in love with Luther, weren't you? I thought I was once. Was he in love with you? He said he was. My stupid little fool. He never said anything of the sort. What do you know about a man's love? You were nothing to him. Nothing, do you hear? He loved me and I've always loved him. <laughs> ah! She was my wife. I killed Lothar, too. Get him out of here. Well, Inspector, now that that's over, you can go back on your vacation. Not quite. There's still a loose bracelet floating around here somewhere. See you later. You're in love with Sally, aren't you? I certainly am. She seems to feel the same way about you. I don't know why, but there's only one thing I've got to say. Sally's a sweet kid. And I hate to see her get mixed up with anybody who isn't on the level. Do I make myself clear? Very. Okay, kid. Go on, kid. Hello. Hello, Jimmy. What's up? Listen, Runt, where's the ice? Where well, uh, I thought with all this heat being turned on, I'd better hide it. Where? On the drunk. Get it? Now you understand. If you have an appointment elsewhere, I'll excuse you. Sorry to intrude. Miss Marsh, I want to apologize for being rude to you, but it was all in the line of duty. I understand. You know, when I get that bracelet, I'm going to relax. I wish the guy that borrowed it would help me out. I got to win that 50 bucks. I've got a hunch you're going to win that, Inspector. I hope so. Well, I guess you two can do without me. I'll be seeing you. I'm going to get that bracelet back now and take the wrap. Hey, wait a minute. Here's that 50 I owe you. And anything you want to do is all right by me, Inspector. I've had my eye on you for some time, young fella. I thought maybe we'd have to teach you a lesson. But I'm convinced you've learned it yourself. When we get back to the States, I'll have to turn you in. But I'm going to recommend probation. I'd sooner reform one guy than jug a million. The next time I get a vacation, I'm going to spend it at headquarters. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, he's a swell person. I say he is. And so are you.